Welcome back to Going Bush, folks. Now, before the break, we were looking at the pros and cons of native forestry versus that of plantation forestry, where they grow all the trees in rows, Nick. At the end of the day, most of what forestry Tasmania have are these beautiful native forests. Indeed, Andrew. And most of the problems they find themselves yes. with are in people's attitude to the harvesting of these forests. It's a ticklish business, but the times they are changing. From the air, there's no disguising the confronting image of a Clearfeld logging coop. It's completely barren, denuded of all life and vegetation. And while the subsequent burning and sowing does create extremely rigorous regrowth forests, there's now scientific evidence to support a move away from clear felling. Harvesting is being guided more and more by the natural disturbance regime that our eucalypt forests, the ones we harvest, experience. And we all know that that's fire. Small ground fires to great big stand replacing wildfires. And for a while we thought clear felling was based on that. It was based on a real hot fire that took all the trees away. What we know now, of course, is that fires do leave some things behind. We call them legacies. Some downed timber, a few dead trees, a few live trees. And they have a really good part to play in providing some new biodiversity, new structure for the forest that comes back after the fire. We try and model our new harvesting on that. And the new harvesting model is a process known as aggregated retention. Forestry Tasmania is going to use in wet old growth forests um, and the idea of it is to leave quite big patches of trees behind um, as refuges for the biodiversity that you get in older forests. Um, so you can see here the, the clumps of trees, that, they're about a half a hectare in size um, and there's lots of habitat trees and there's also the understory down below that hasn't been the third. All right, so from on the ground, it's also pretty obvious. Over here, you've got the aggregate. Over here, you've got where the site was harvested. And to tell us more is Robin Scott, who's a research officer from FT. Robin, welcome to the show, first of all. Thanks a lot. Now, what are some of the differences in harvesting techniques? I mean, obviously, you leave a big bunch of trees, but there's more to it than that. Um, well, there is and there isn't. In fact, in terms of actually harvesting these coops, there's not a whole lot that the contractors have to do that's different than there is from clear felling. I mean, they are leaving aggregates behind, but a lot of the techniques are very similar. Um, there are some safety issues with aggregated retention because you have so much more of the coop where you're actually within an edge, within a tree's length of the edge. Um, so there's some risks for the contractors when they're working underneath these, um, as well as for researchers when they're working in these areas. Now, interesting thing about this coop here, they're about four year old, those trees. That's four year old regen. No one ever actually sowed any seeds there? No, these coops were regenerated naturally, um, just relying on the seeds within the aggregates falling onto the coop uh, to bring up that regen. And that's worked fairly well. Uh, in a lot of our operational coops, we're finding that we don't have enough seed on the coop to sow them, and so we're going in and aerially sowing them. The advantages of the new system are retaining more old trees in the landscape, softening the look of a harvested site, as well as retaining mature trees to create habitat for birds, bugs and animals. It does, however, throw up a few problems of its own. Now, one difference here is that if this was just a clear fell site, it's quite easy to burn, isn't it? Because the coop's dry and you just burn it. But uh, when you've got aggregated retention, it's a bit more difficult. It's a bit of a challenge because you're trying to avoid burning the aggregates. Um, we certainly don't want to burn right through them, although a little bit of scorching on them we figure is not actually that bad of a thing. Uh, but there is definitely challenges involved with burning these um, and we've had to develop new methods of burning so that we can actually get a good burn on these aggregated retention sites, uh, which is what helps us to regenerate them. So what are, what are some of those new methods? Uh, essentially it's called slow burning and what it means is that we're lighting the coops later in the day when the relative humidity is rising um, and we're relying on the fuel moisture differential between the dry fuels on the coop and the wet fuels in the aggregate to try and keep the fire out of those aggregates. We light the fire later in the day, um, it'll sort of start to creep through the dry fuels and spread overnight, burning the coop and uh, if everything goes well it won't actually burn right through the aggregates. Meaning the coop will grow back? There's always the case for adaptive management uh, to do things better, but I think our guide, which is the natural disturbance regime, will always be there. So we'll always be using the, the, the wildfire as our guide for how we manage forests. Because that's the way you get the best forest stand back again. 
So as forestry Tasmania moves away from clear felling in old growth forests, you'll be seeing more and more aggregated retention harvesting. And as you've seen, there are plenty of benefits. Stands of mature forest left inside the coop to provide all important habitat, better natural seeding of eucalypts and rainforest species, and the whole process is much, much easier on the eye. If you'd like to learn more, why not jump onto the FT website at forestrytas.com.au. Still to come on Going Bush, head to head in a forestry fish-off and the behind the scenes work to stop your washing line smelling of smoke.